Hello and welcome back. This is Jennifer. Sorry it's been a while since I've done a video, but I have several filmed and ready to share. So today I thought I would share with you something that I found helpful for one of my biggest struggles in creating, and that is coming up with color combinations. I always go back to the same combinations because it's comfortable, but sometimes it's fun to challenge myself and do different combinations. So today I'm sharing my favorite sources for unique color combos. I have a good variety of cards and a lot of them too. I will show the source of my color combos, what I created, and then we'll move on to another example. Okay, let's get started with my first and favorite and most used source for color combinations, and that is the color catalogs. These are downloadable PDFs with a ton of color combinations that are easy to search. I've used these in a video before. I'll link to it up here in the top right if you want more inspiration. I will also provide a link to the color catalogs below because they have a video showing how to use them and it's really helpful. So there are two color catalogs. You can buy one or both and you can search by color, keyword, or collection. I like doing collection because I think it's a fun way to discover new color combinations. I purchased the catalog several months ago and I keep them on my desktop on my computer so I can pull them up whenever I'm crafting. Now of the different color sources I talk about today, this is the only paid option. The other ones are free, but I like having all of the combinations together in one place and so many organized well. Now the price of it I think is very reasonable for how much I use it, but you could definitely check it out and learn more about it at the link below. It's really a fun resource. I'm gonna do a few cards here at the beginning using different combinations I got from the color catalog. And I will share the combination so you can see where I'm headed. Okay, let's get started with this card. The colors of thread I used here were inspired by one of the color combinations in the color catalog. You can see it here, it's so beautiful. Now I do a lot of stitching on cards. Some of my examples have stitching today, but I'm just gonna kind of go through the stitching very quickly because this is really about the colors. Now the stitching dies that I use today are new from Spellbinders. They are the May 2021 large die of the month set. This is such a great die set. I like that there are many pieces to it that can be used together or separately, so you can get a lot of different looks. You could do backgrounds with this border die or just a border. You can also cut apart little flowers so that you can have smaller pieces. So you'll see some creative uses of this today. Now I know not everyone likes to stitch on their cards. You could also just put colored paper behind this so you have dots of color showing through. Many ways you can use it. Now again, I'm not gonna go into stitching in detail in this video because this is about the color combos, but I will link to a video up here in the top right that does go into the details on how to use these dies if you're interested. I like that these dies cut the holes and also make little impressions on where the stitches should go, so it's very easy to follow. I use DMC six ply floss for this, and I take it apart so that there's only two ply to stitch with. Again, that other video explains it. Now, when I do the stitching, which I do a lot, I get stuck with color combos. I always go to the same thing. So that's what really inspired this video and why there's a lot of stitching in it. But we will also do some die cutting examples too. So I did a ton of different stitch pieces to share with you today, all while at my son's baseball games. And we're gonna just turn them into cards. Again, if you wanna learn how to stitch, check out that other video. So here's one background that I did using that color combination I showed you before. I also die cut two additional frames and I use spray adhesive to glue them together. This is gonna get glued to the back of our stitch piece just to give it dimension. You do not have to do this. I just love that dimension on my cards. And I find when you have a die cut with this many little holes, the spray adhesive really is handy. I do spray it outside just to be careful. One important thing to note about spray adhesive, the one that I use, is it takes a little bit of time to get sticky. It's not sticky immediately, it takes just maybe 30 seconds. So just put something heavy on it while it dries and you'll have a good adhesion. Okay, so let me just show you this completed card and we'll go on to another color combination. I added my stitch piece to a white note card and stamped a simple black sentiment in the center from the Simon Says Stamp XL Greeting 2 stamp set, which I've been using a lot in videos lately. 
The overall card size of this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I did add some soft yellow pearls to the center of the flowers for a bit of dimension. I really like that this is card making that I can take on the go, the stitching portion, and then come back to my craft room and assemble it very quickly. So let's compare my card to the color combo that inspired it. I like that this color combination had orange and yellow in it. I normally would just choose one or the other, so it inspired me to do both. Here's another stitch card inspired by the color catalog. Now what actually got me to do this video is I shared a preview of the stitching on social media and a bunch of people said I love that color combo. And that's what kind of sparked the idea of doing a video about this. Here's the color combo that I found in the color catalog for this card. Now this is not a color combination I normally would do. I normally wouldn't use red and purple and light pink and orange and yellow together but I challenged myself to do it and I ended up loving it in the end. That's the nice thing about these color combinations and trying something out of your comfort zone. This time I put my stitched piece onto a soft gray note card that I made from Simon Says Stamp Fog cardstock and I white heat embossed a subtle sentiment in the center from the Honey Bee Stamps He Has Risen stamp set. I also added pearls to the center of the stitched flowers. And the overall card size of this is again four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Okay, so let's compare it to the color combo. And you can see how I used each of those colors. I also added in green for the leaves, but I really was pleased with the final results. But it was something I was unsure about in the beginning. Okay, here is another stitch card. This time I changed it up. Notice the stitching is only on two sides of the frame. I like to kind of change up the results I get from dies like this, and this saves time because there's less stitching. Here is the color combo from the color catalog that inspired this. I love those bright colors and thought it'd be fun to challenge myself to stitch the leaves with the teal colors instead of green. Okay, so I have two rectangle dies that are a little different in size, and I'm taping them together onto white cardstock. I'll run this through my die cut machine, and this will form a frame. This is one of the reasons I recommend investing in rectangle stacking dies, because you can easily create frames of whatever size you need. So now I have a white frame that I can put around this stitch piece. So that stitch background, I did the whole frame and I just cut off part of it. So I only had to stitch some of it. I created two more or three more of these white frames using the rectangle dies, and I'm building them up for dimension. You don't have to do this, but you know me, I love my dimension. So I put two together there, and now I'm gluing this border of the stitch piece right on top of it. So again, you can cut that stitched frame down to whatever size you want. I thought this looked pretty cool, and I can save the other half that I cut off for another card. Now I have another white rectangle frame to glue on top of that to give it a nice finished look. And I even made one of the leaves kind of stick out from the frame for some fun. The rest of the card is quite simple now that the stitching is done. I did want an extra leaf up there on the top left. So I used the single leaf die that's included in the die set and I stitched that and cut it a little bit shorter and I'm just gluing it right behind one of the flowers. I like that you can change up the arrangement that way. And it's also fun to have that leaf peeking out on the top of the frame up there. That thank you sentiment is from the Poppy Stamps Thank You Poe script die. It's a great classic look to it. I die cut it from a scrap of gold textured cardstock that I had, added it to the white space, and I also added some Trinity Stamps satin gold pearls. I like how that matched the sentiment and also the gold stitching that I did on the flowers. I chose to put this on a plum colored note card because that was my favorite of the thread colors that I used and I wanted that to stand out. Whenever I use a bold colored note card, I do like to glue a white piece into the inside just so I have a nice place to write my sentiment and it gives it a nice finished look. Especially if you're using a lighter weight cardstock, this can add some stability to it. And here is a comparison to the color combo that I used from the color catalog and the card that I came up with. I probably would never have made pool color or teal colored leaves, but I like the results. Okay, let's just do a couple more from the color catalog, including this one, where I changed up that stitching die again to fit a mini slimline card. 
Now here's the color combination from the color catalog. It's a pretty simple color combination, but seeing the monochromatic collection in there inspired me and reminded me to try that with these stitching cards. So here I use the Simon Says Stamp Mini Slimline Rectangle Die Set to create white frames, just like I showed you earlier. I'm gluing two of these frames together, and then on top of that, I will glue two stitched corners. So when I want to change up the stitching die to create these smaller pieces, what I do is I die cut it and then cut out the portions I want and then stitch those. In this case, I cut off all four corners of the stitch frame. I'm using two corners here and two on my next card. That way I was able to create two cards out of one frame. It's a good time saver. Now if you're not into stitching, you could do the same technique of changing up a regular die cut. Say you have a big uh, intricate die cut, maybe a doily or something, cut it into smaller pieces and put it in the corners of a frame like this and it gives it a different look. It's a great way to stretch your supplies and get new designs. Okay, so I added that onto a slimline note card. You can see it up there at the top. And then I used the other two stitched corners on this card on the left. And I did a gold glitter frame for that one. I have a few extra stitched leaves that I used that small leaf die to create so that I could add a little more here and there on these cards. Here I'm even cutting one of the little berries, the little stitched berries here, so I can add that to my card too. So you can cut little pieces out of this and make whatever look you want. Now this may seem silly, but I intentionally chose gold with these cards. Normally with these cool colors, these pool colors, I would use silver, but I thought I'd change it up and use gold and I ended up liking it. So sometimes challenging yourself to use a color you normally wouldn't use pays off in the end. Okay, so here is the, sl the mini slimline card. The overall size of this is three and a half by six and a quarter inches. So I put my frame onto a light pool note card and I added some gold gemstones. So really, once you did the stitching to this, it was very quick to pull together. That lots of love in the center is from Pink Fresh Studio. I cut the shadow from the same cardstock my note card is from. And then I cut the Lots of Love from Teal cardstock and glued those together right in the center. Here is the other card I made with that same color inspiration. The sentiment on this one is from the Pink Fresh Studios Perfect Sentiments stamp set, which I'll show you later in this video. And I gold heat embossed that. You can see the gold glitter frame there, the gold gems at the center to add some sparkle, and it all pulls together nicely. The overall size of this is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. Okay, let's talk about another great source for color combinations, and that is fashion catalogs or websites. Now, I have a couple favorites that I go to a lot, and actually two of my favorite places to shop for Lila and also for myself. So I thought I'd share those today. So here is a dress from T Collection. If you have a little boy or girl, I highly recommend checking out T Collection. They have the nicest clothes, high quality, great designs inspired by travel. I just really like that company. And they have incredible color combinations. So this card was inspired by this dress and I will link to these below. So this time I used the border dies included in that Spellbinders May 2021 uh, large die of the month set. And by the way, you can sign up for their subscriptions and cancel any time. You can also sign up for multiple ones and get better savings that way. It's really by far one of the best subscription programs I've seen. The value and simplicity of it are just excellent. Okay, so I did some basic stitching inspired by that color combination and that dress. And I'm adding some dimension behind it with white cardstock scraps. I will now glue this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch light gray note card. A lot of times when I have a lot of white space or I have a lot of bright colors, I like to match it up with a light gray. I just feel like that adds a little more interest to it. Now here I did one of the stitched borders, but I only stitched some of the flowers and I'm cutting those little flowers out so I can have individual ones. It's just another example of how you can alter these to change up the look of your dies. I arranged those all in a little cluster along my border 
and added a Birch Press handwritten thanks die sentiment. So I die cut the shadow of this die from white cardstock and the word thanks itself from black and glued those together and put that right on top of our stitching. I'll just use a strong liquid adhesive such as Berry Art Glue or Gina K Connect to hold those all in place. Now I use stitching dies for this, but you definitely could use any border die and small die cuts to do this design of card. And you can try out this color combination. To finish it off, I did add some soft yellow and soft pink pearls, just scattered here and there and also in the center of the flowers for a finished look. And now let's do a comparison between my card and the dress that inspired it. It's okay if you kind of veer off from the colors that inspired you. It just helps you get a start. And by the way, if you go to Tea Collection, wait until they have sales. They often have great deals. Okay, let's do another color combination inspired by a website. Now this time, no stitching. I just did some die cutting, which is something I also love to do. And this time, I'm inspired by Bowdoin. Bowdoin has the most incredible color combinations. There's Bowdoin for adults, and that's where this dress is from. And there's also mini Bowdoin for kids. Now this is a color combination I normally wouldn't try, but when I saw this dress, I thought it was eye-catching and I thought I'd give it a try for a birdhouse card. Now the birdhouse dies that I'm using today on this card and another are from Spellbinders. These are the birdhouses through the seasons. So there's one die set for each season. There's summer, spring, fall, and winter. And then there is a set of birds that you can go along with it. Here is the summer birdhouse version. It's a little lighthouse with lots of different die cuts to go with it. Here we have the spring, which I really like the detailed impression that you get with that die. It's got like a floral impression that it makes. I use the little flowers from this one. I like them a lot. Next is the fall birdhouse, which I'll be using the house from this today. I like how there's themes to each of these, but you can mix them up and use them all in different ways together. And also I think it's fun to be able to do a seasonal card and then add what oca whatever occasion you want to it. And here is the winter one. It's got a little mistletoe. I really like the bow die that's included and the branch. So these die sets have been super popular lately and I think it's because they can be used for so many different occasions and I'll be sure to use them in a video again. Now the bird stand, uh, die set, the sweet birds, it comes with a branch and then several different birds and there are little feet and leaves in there too. Now for fun, I die cut these from some rainbow colors. Look how cute all of these birds are. I still need to add eyes to them, but I think it'd be fun to do a little rainbow scene on the branch. I ran out of time to do that, but I will be using these little birds on our two birdhouse cards today. I just wanted to show those to you, super cute. Okay, so back to this birdhouse card. I used the colors inspired by that dress and I just die cut a bunch of pieces. I die cut my birdhouse, I die cut some flowers, I die cut some leaves, I do extras so that when I go to assemble it, everything's ready and I can save any extras for later on. I do like to add dimension. So here, instead of just leaving the birdhouse plain, I added a darker roof to it in two layers of these little uh, shutters onto the window at the top. By adding that dimension, it really brings your card to life. I also used a heart die to cut a hole there on the birdhouse, and now I can add my little bird. Again, I'm following the color combination from that dress. I like doing cards like this with lots of little die cuts because I go to my scraps drawer, which I have drawers like divided up with different colors. And I go and I find some scraps in the colors that I find in my color inspiration. And then I just go to town die cutting and I can make a card pretty quickly because the color decisions are made. Okay, now here for the flowers and leaves, I used the Spellbinders Mini Blooms and Springs die, Sprigs die set. This is an absolute favorite die set of mine. I use a lot. I've used it in videos before and I have some more videos coming up using it. It creates the most beautiful set of flowers with details to it and they're great for adding to die cut scenes like the ones we're doing today. In fact, I have a little bowl of extras of these in my drawer because I use them so much. Okay, now for the background of the card, I use the PhotoPlay number six dots die. This cuts to three and a half by six and a quarter, so it's perfect for mini slimline card. I die cut two of these from white cardstock, 
and then I glued them onto a white note card that is the same size. Once again, three and a half by six and a quarter. That's my favorite size to make for mini slimline. By doing two layers of these white dots onto the white card, it just adds a little bit of interest to the background, but not too distracting from the colorful birdhouse we made. So there you can see my little birdhouse. I just glued the flowers and birds onto it. Here I'm using some scraps to create a little stand for our birdhouse to be on. You could also have it hanging from a branch if you prefer. These little birdhouses would even work in the grass and maybe put like a little gnome stamp with it if you want. For a sentiment on this one, I used the Photoplay Banner Sentiment Stamp Set and Coordinating Dies. This is a great set that you'll see me use in a future video also because there are so many great occasions in this. And it's something easy and interesting that you can add onto a card just about anywhere. I thought it'd be fun to have the little banner right across our birdhouse. I started by die cutting the banner with the coordinating die, and I'm just taping that into my Misty stamping tool. There's this little stamp that allows you to create a darker spots on your banner just to make it look more realistic. Now I stamped that a few times with soft pool ink just to make it a bit darker, but notice how already that banner looks more realistic. Now you can stamp any of the sentiments in there. I like that the sentiments have the right arch to go right onto the banners. So I'll just stamp that with black ink and there we have an interesting sentiment to put right on the center of our card. So to finish off this card, all I did was add a few pearls here and there because that's what I like to do and I seem to do to every card, but I like the dimension and shine it gives. Now this is three and a half by six and a quarter. So I use a mini slim line envelope. That's the pink one you see there. And I'll link to my source for that below. So here you can see all the details that these die cuts provide and the unique color combination that I got inspired by that dress. This is definitely not a color combination I would have tried on my own, but I really liked it in the end. So it's fun to kind of stretch your creative muscles by trying something new. And again, that dress is from Bowdoin, great website, and I will link to it below. All right, let's do another birdhouse card. This color combination was a huge stress, stretch for me, but when I saw the dress on T Collection, I knew I had to give it a try. I just thought this dress was super cute. There's a tiny little pops of green in there, kind of hard to see, but I thought it'd be great for a birdhouse. So again, don't be afraid to try something that is really out there for you. So I used all of the same products that I just showed you, still using those tiny little flower and leaf dies. I have a birdhouse, that's the winter birdhouse, and I have a little bird. So I'm gonna skip through all of the die cutting and arranging of the die cuts. Please keep in mind that I always put lots of photos on my blog. You can go over there, you can bookmark your favorites there, you can print them out so you can try the same design or cluster of die cuts or whatever. So remember, you can always have that resource. So here I put my colorful die cuts against a white background. I also used a craft cardstock for the birdhouse. A lot of times when I use bright colors, I use craft, white, or that light gray I showed you earlier. Now the sentiment is a Simon Says Stamp sentiment strip. I kept it small so that the die cuts would stand out. Now the background, that's the Tailored Expressions Diamonds Piercing Plate. I had to get this when I saw it. Love the detail it adds. And doing this, kind of like the white dots we did before, adds interest to those large white space areas. One tip that I find very helpful, if you have a bold color combination like this one that you're going to try, use it in small doses and then use a lot of neutrals around it, like the craft and white. That always is helpful to me. All right, let's do another card inspired by a dress. This time, the inspiration came from Bowdoin, another beautiful dress. I like the corals and the navy and the gray. I'll link to this below. I'm also using the Spellbinders Small Die of the Month set from May 2021. I like how intricate and detailed these dies are. You can use them together to cover the entire front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card, or you can just use the bits and pieces separately. I did do two stitch flowers using the stitching die set I showed you at the beginning of the video and using color combos inspired by the dress that I just shared from Bowdoin. Now I die cut these pieces from silver cardstock and from navy. 
Now the dress had gray, I thought I'd make it silver just to change it up a bit. For sentiment, I'm using the new Hero Arts Message Strips Stamps and Coordinating Dies. These actually aren't available just yet, but will be in a couple days. I'll be using them again in a video soon. I stamped your amazing and used the die to cut it out. Gives a perfect cut. So here is a look at the completed card, very quick to pull together. I did add some pearls to the flowers for lots of detail and some pearls to the background die cut. I love how these dies are so intricate that it makes the card look complicated, but it really didn't take long to put together. And by using a unique color combination, it really stands out. Now my colors are a little less orange than the dress, but it gave me a kickstart to create a card that I normally wouldn't do. All right, let's talk about my third source of inspiration for color combos, and that is to look to your fellow artists. There are so many talented card makers and artists out there who have an incredible eye for color. And by far, my favorite is Sherry Carroll. Sherry has been a stamper longer than most of us have been. She's one I learned a lot of things from over the years. And Sherry is wonderful with color. She does brights, she does mutes, she does everything in between. I highly recommend checking her out and I'll link to her Instagram below. This card by Sherry inspired my next card's color combination. So I have another piece of a stitch frame that I showed you at the beginning of this video. This time I thought I'd tuck it behind a heart window so it would kind of look like the heart is filled with stitching. It's just another way to use those products creatively. So I die cut from blue cardstock and from white, glued those together just to have some dimension. And now to the back of that heart opening, I will glue this corner of stitching. I can just trim off the extras, including that little leaf that's sticking out the side. And that way I can stick that leaf into the final card in a different spot too. So even if you don't have stitching dies, you could do this card design with, again, with any large intricate die cut you may have. Say you have a doily, just put the doily behind the heart and it gives it a different look. Now I'm gluing this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch top folding white note card. And remember I had that little leaf left over, so I'm gonna glue him up here on the top left just to give it a little more balance. All right, at this point I decided I wanted stamping on that blue. I know it was a risk to do it at this point, so I just put the heart over my stitching to protect it. And now I'm stamping with white pigment ink, a Simon Says Stamp Friendship Text Background Stamp. This just gives a little bit of interest to that white background or to that blue background. And it's inspired by Sherry. Sherry does this background text a lot and it always adds a little something special. So I thought I'd try it. Okay, to finish this off, I added a sentiment. There are two sets here, both from Pink Fresh Studio. I recommend these. I've used them in a video before. This is the Pink Fresh Celebrating You. There's a stamp set, coordinating die, and a hot foil plate. So you can hot foil your sentiment and cut it out or stamp the sentiment and cut it out. Love that it gives both options. You stamp them all at once and then die cut them all at once and you end up with a bunch of greetings. I'll be using both of these in this video. I used the miss you on one of the earlier cards. So you take out the large stamp, all those sentiments are connected and you stamp them all at once. Here I'm using white cardstock and stamping with Versamark ink and then I'll add gold embossing powder. This will give me lots of gold heat embossed sentiments all at once. Huge time saver and I just keep the extras in a little bowl so I have them on hand. So here I use this stamp with the coordinating die. Remember there is a hot foil plate option too. I use that in another video and I'll link to it on the top right here if you wanted to see more ideas. So I added that sentiment towards the top of our heart and then I also added some Trinity Stamps Gold Satin Pearls. They just have a nice uh, matte finish to them that goes nicely with heat embossing. So there you can see the detail that we have and I give that floral uh, stitched frame a completely different look by putting it behind a heart shaped window. You could also do circle, square, rectangle, whatever you have. And here's a comparison to the color inspiration from Sherry. I think that's a beautiful card. I used a little less purple, but it still worked out great. All right, here is another card. This one's very bold, but the idea was to go with lots of bold color and some black and some white. This was inspired by Sherry Carroll once again. 
I saw these cards of her and I just loved the bright colors with the white and the black on it. So that is what I decided to do with my stitching on this card. Now I wanted to show you the gems I used on this card. These are the Spellbinders Essential Gem Sets. Look at, they have super tiny to large gems. There are two different kind of colors or finishes in each pack, and I really like these. They have adhesive on the back, but I have trust is issues with self-adhesive, especially on stitching, so I just use a little glue behind it too. Now I love this one that has the golds. There's a soft gold, gold gem in there that I don't have in any other kind of gems and they are super sparkly and that's what I used on this card. I just wanted to mention this because I know a lot of people like gems but would prefer self-adhesive and these are great options. All right, so here is the completed card. I added a Thinking of You from the Pink Fresh Studio stamp set I showed you earlier. This is on a white note card that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And all of my stitching was done on a black cardstock die cut. Check out the sparkle with those gemstones. I'm crazy about those. I really think it's a great way to add interest to a card, something to make your cards even more special. And again, here is the inspiration, just lots of different bright colors on black and white. I really think it turned out fun and something I normally wouldn't have done. So I hope these three sources of color inspirations are helpful to you. I really struggle with this and I find I get hung up on it when I'm creating. And so to have somewhere to refer to quickly is so helpful to me. And I have lots of little pieces left over that I can mix and match anytime. As always, if you're interested in any of the things I talked about, the inspiration or the products, they are linked below in my YouTube description. You can also go to my blog where I'll have lots of photos and you can bookmark and save cards if you prefer. Now at the end here, I'll have a couple other related videos for you to check out. And I really hope this video is helpful. Feel free to share in the comments below your favorite places to look for color combos. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you again soon.